Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Valeria Quijada, and I am the admissions representative for the University of Arizona. I work primarily with Canadian students and their families, and I help them along the way with the admission process and answer any of the questions that they may have. Joining me today is the athletic liaison and former athlete, Thomas Opio. Hi, Thomas. And joining us later today is our student athlete, James Rivers. So let's get started. So the University of Arizona is located in Tucson, Arizona, which is in the southwest part of the United States in between the states of California and New Mexico. Tucson is near plenty of big cities such as Phoenix, San Diego, LA, and Las Vegas, but without the big city price tag. In 2016, we were named the most affordable city by Inc. Magazine, and we were named top 10 city to live in by Business Insider. Tucson has close to a million people living here, and it's a friendly, laid-back city. Uh, we are considered a college town, so a lot of what happens in Tucson revolves around the University of Arizona. What this means is that we have a very strong community support, and that helps us um, make our students feel like they're at home. Our average winter temperature ranges from 18 degrees Celsius to 24 degrees Celsius, which I know for those of you in Canada, that's not much of a winter temperature. But for us here in Tucson, that is considered cold. However, we are really fortunate because we have over 350 days of sunshine, which means that even during winter, everyone can still enjoy outdoor activities such as hiking, camping, biking, or even visiting our national and state parks. Um, as you can see, here are some pictures of our beautiful campus, which is very wide and open. It offers state-of-the-art facilities. We have several student unions. We have two rec centers and several libraries and students are, can find everything they need within campus. And if not, they can follow, um, find it next door on University Boulevard, which is full of shops and restaurants and anything that a student may need can be within walking distance, whether it be on University Boulevard, in downtown, or in our historic Fourth Avenue. If you would like to see our campus virtually, you can visit www.arizona.edu slash studentlive slash virtual visit. Some of our rankings include top 1% of the world by Center for World University Rankings. Um, we are considered top, top 100 university by US News and World Report. And we were named number 20 in public research by US National Science Foundation. University of Arizona is a leader in both the arts and sciences. We offer over 100 undergraduate academic programs and over 200 graduate academic programs, equaling to over 300 academic programs available to our students. We have strong programs in both arts and sciences, such as number nine humanities, top 10 programs in film and television, theater and dance. Um, but we also have very strong STEM majors, such as engineering, which is considered one of our competitive majors. We have 15 different concentrations in engineering. We also have a top 20 business program through the, to, through the LR College of Management. And we have strong programs in biology, chemistry, physiology, and we have the first undergraduate law degree in the United States, also considered one of our competitive programs as, long as, as well as our nursing program, which is also a competitive program. And we also offer over 600 clubs and organizations for our students. So if a student has different interests, they can get they can be active around campus and in the community, which can help them stand out when it comes to applying to graduate school or even to the workforce. The University of Arizona spends over $650 million a year in research. So students looking to major in the STEM field and wanting to be part of a lab or to do research during their undergraduate career is very possible at the University of Arizona and can also help stand, help stand out in graduate and workforce. So living on campus, our students are not required to live on campus. However, we do recommend it. And this is because according to some surveys that have been done, students who live on campus have a 50% higher four-year graduation rate than their peers that don't. Um, we have 
23 residence halls with full amenities and they range in prices and locations. So our residence halls can be found around campus. And if a student wants maybe a close-knit community, they can pick a smaller dorm. But if they want maybe a dorm that's near their, their college, such as the College of Business or the Fine Arts College, they can also pick based on that. Um, we have options for everyone and you can view all our options in our website on housing.arizona.edu. Here's a picture of one of our newest dorms, which is the Honors College dorm. As you can see, it's a very nice dorm. It is located near one of our rec centers and near the business college, so the Eller College of Management. Thomas, you wanna go? Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, so I just wanted to cover um, a few things regarding to athletics, as my colleague uh, Valeria mentioned. I'm actually a former student athlete, even though that was a really long time ago, um, at the University of Arizona. Uh, and I work very closely with um, <clears throat> with athletics department. My focus is mostly with international students, um, you know, at uh, University of Arizona and um, some other entities. So the first thing I wanted to um, point out is, is you know, looking at some of the resources that we have uh, and also kind of have, um, you know, some fun activities trying to see if um, we can have maybe, you know, ways to think about this, um, you know, going forward. Um, next slide, Valeria. Right <clears throat> okay, got it. Okay, so for example, um, I don't know how many people have thought about this, but um, it's, it's kind of interesting to, to know that seven of the top 10 largest stadiums in the world um, belong to college sports. Um, that's really, really crazy because I mean, these are stadiums holding more than 100,000 um, people. Yes, I know most of them are football, but if you think about, you know, for most of you guys thinking about, you know, going doing um, college sports and, and, and especially at the Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three level, one of the things that we we don't um, at least, you know, because you saw focus in training, that we don't take time to think about is really the level of competition that you add, uh, especially at the NCA level, um, and also, you know, thinking about, you know, how many high school athletes are doing sports um, and how many will transition to college um, you know for for scholarship or to you know um, to continue playing and that's about two percent within the US now this is by any means not meant to discourage anybody thinking about that um, you know transitioning to college to play sports if anybody really I mean I'm really really big in encouraging students to, to um, you know to try it out and, and, and see if it works out you never know I mean not every student who's, you know, who's a star in the NCA uh, level uh, of sports was probably, you know, being looked at in uh, in high school. So, you know, so yes, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of people doing sports, but 2% is also, um, you know, this is huge. I mean, this is a, considering the number of uh, NCA student athletes, and that's not considering the other um, athletic category as uh, NAIA and also junior colleges. And also, again, I mean, you know, interesting fact, um, in most states in the US, the highest paid uh, state official, that will be probably either the head football coach or um, the basketball coach. I'm pretty sure most of you guys know how much, you know, some of these salaries are. I'm probably not gonna, you know, go into the details for that, but it's, you know, it just kind of tells you the the, um, the level of, I guess, um, commitment, um, you know, needed to, um, you know, to, to play in, this, uh, in these levels. And, and again, I mean, you know, anybody, you know, offering a coach that might salary, they probably know that they're going to get a return out of that. So, and then the last one, which is probably my my most uh, interesting part is, which is kind of a question for the audience to think about is, what if the NCA, you know, whether it's division one, division two, II, division three, pick the top three athletes, you know, just like qualifying for the Olympics. What if the NCA was a country in the Olympics? How many countries do you think, or where do you think the NCA will finish in the medal stands? Um, I'm curious to see what um, what the audience thinks about you know about that 
um, because it's it's uh, you know my my theory is that you know there will be um, well I'll probably give my answer you know in the uh, in the end okay. Um, so thinking about, you know, um, athletics, one of the things I wanted to give is, is just kind of like a, you know, really brief or general overview um, of, you know, uh, University of Arizona Athletics. Uh, we are a Division I um, uh, program and, you know, within athletics, I think there's about or maybe more than 500 student athletes within, you know, within the different, uh, uh, different sports. Um, you know, Division I, as is, is most of you guys know, is probably one of the most um, widely known, it, you know, and, and again, I mean, I don't want to say it's the super most competitive. There are some really, really good Division Two programs out there, um, but Division One is, you know, is, is where University of Arizona is. And as, as such, um, when you look at um, our facilities, and especially when it comes to, you know, training facilities and and, um, and, and other support facilities at the university, you know, they have to be top notch. You know, part of it because, you know, it, it, recruiting athletes and especially uh, some of the ultra competitive sports like basketball, football, you know, things like that, it be, it becomes, you know, it's almost, they, it, they have to use these facilities as a showcase for some of the high profile um, recruits. So in this case, I mean, I think our basketball stadium holds about 14,000 people. Um, but if you look at uh, the facilities itself for, for training, you know, I think there's about four gyms. Uh, for training facilities, as far as uh, strength and conditioning, you know, weight rooms, what we call you know, weight rooms. There's about four, there's a main one, football has one, basketball has one, and some of the other sports, you know, for example, track and field has a half site, uh, even though it's a mini one, but, you know, it is there. So, so yeah, so a lot of facilities, you know, within the, uh, within the uh, university. In addition to that, there's also, um, you know, a lot of academic uh, support. You know, our academic um, facility, you know, it's a building by itself where, you know, uh, tutors, you know, uh, are held, where, you know, academic advisors for the student athletes, where um, learning specialists for student athletes. So there's going to be, you know, especially when it comes to, um, when it comes to academic support, you know, one of the things that I love about athletics and especially University of Arizona, there's no guesswork. You know, every student schedule, their GPA, the times and all, all those things, it's not. Like everything is really, really um, arranged really well, and students are able to, um, you know, to follow through uh, throughout the semester and have a lot of support as they go forward. And um, when it comes to international students, um, University of Arizona has been recruiting international students for quite some time, uh, and so is you know probably most of the big Division One um, programs out there. I think I'll probably say. And I don't know how many people in in the audience have heard of Sage Watson. Yeah, she's an Olympian from Canada. Um, that's just one of the names. But you know, typically speaking, we have you know quite you know quite a number of uh, international students in any given you know any any given year. Uh, and especially you know when you look at programs like tennis and and uh, you know golf and you know track and field and you know even basketball. Uh, typically, there's quite a few um, international students that. Uh, that are in the roster. So again, I mean, um, interesting, I probably, this one, I, I think one of our student athletes will probably going to cover this a little bit more. But if you think about, you know, a typical day for, you know, for a student, um, it really depends on the, it depends on the sport, but one of the things that I would like to mention is, at least at the University of Arizona, you know, having a schedule um, as a student athlete is actually, it's actually quite easy because most of, you know, our student athletes, they register about a month before the rest of the student body registers. So in this case, they are able to pick, you know, classes that are going to fit within their training, uh, training program. In this case, most students are not going to take classes, you know, past uh, 12 o'clock. Uh, unless it's it's you know uh, it's their senior year and there's no classes available you know etc cetera, etc cetera. so so a typical day you know um, most most sports will probably be training in the morning um, so in the morning they'll start training and then uh, after they finish you know training in the morning they'll go to classes and then they'll probably have training uh, training in the afternoon as well um, you know as far as housing 
we do have domes that are designated to uh, student athletes. So that really helps a lot, especially, you know, in the freshman uh, freshman years where students are, you know, are clustered within, you know, within the same the same dorm where they can support each other and, uh, you know, be able to progress uh, academically as they try to, you know, to, to learn, you know, about the, the, the big university or the, 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 the campus. Um, the next one, as I mentioned a little bit more um, on the schedule planning, you know, there is a lot of support when it comes to scheduling, especially as mentioned, because students are going to register, you know, about a month before uh, before other students register. In this case, you know, they can plan, they can plan really well. Now, you know, having said that, when it comes to the competition, you know, some of the sports are very, very demanding. Um, you know, again, I mean, during COVID, it's a little bit different, but the travel schedule, you know, is really demanding on students. That probably means that, um, you know, some classes will be missed, and especially when it comes to the NCA tournament. Having said that, though, um, a lot of the you know students will you know the faculty you know the athletic departments works with with um, the faculty in these classes to make you know them aware that these are students who are doing sports and you know their schedule might be demanding you know et cetera et cetera. So in this case, also when students travel, you know they're able to do their work. Most of the sports, uh, especially the big sports, and they travel with the you know with the academic advisors and the learning specialists. So if a student is let's say is in Iowa for competition, their academic support is going to go with them on these trips. So this, you know, in this case, you know, they're able to, you know, to stay on track. But like I said, I mean, when it comes to, to support uh, for the, you know, within the academics part to, you know, make sure that these students are making progress, I, I haven't seen anywhere where, you know, students are very well supported as much as, you know, athletics does, uh, does the job. Yeah. So this is probably uh, one of the big ones, and I'm assuming that a lot of the, um, you know, a lot of you know other colleagues from other universities are probably touched on this. Um, you know, getting scholarship is 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 um, is very interesting, and one of the things that I always mention to students is, you know, this, you know, athletic scholarship. You know, there's also academic scholarships. You know, different ways of 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 going at it. But one of the things to you know that I usually tell students, and especially when I'm traveling, is you know, understanding a college coach's mindset, and especially because of how competitive, um, you know, this program is. A lot of coaches out there, they, they really have an idea of what they're looking for. And a lot of them will spend a lot of time recruiting or, you know, building networks in, in different parts of the world, you know, that are going to help them identify, you know, identify, you know, uh, prospective athletes. So if you're trying to reach out to a coach and, you know, they don't respond to you right away, it doesn't mean that they, you know, they're ignoring you. It just, you know, probably have to try again. But one of the things that I usually tell students is, you know, take a look at the, um, take a look at the, the, the program's roster. You know, if you, you know, let's say, for example, you're thinking about tennis, you know, take a look at the, the college, you know, the coaches within the tennis program. If the head coach doesn't respond, you know, take a look at some of the graduate students that might be there. The, the workload might be a little bit lighter to try to, you know, to, um, to communicate with them um, you know, re reaching out to them. Um, again, I mean, getting a scholarship is, it's, um, you know, obviously it's very, very competitive. Uh, and I'm pretty sure most of the uh, colleagues that went ahead of me, you know, mentioned that uh, some of the, you know, some of the programs, you know, will offer different, you know, different level of scholarship, whether it's partial, uh, some of them will just, might just go with academic scholarship. Uh, but there's, there's different ways of, of, uh, of that. But again, uh, one of the things that I always, encourage students to think about is, you know, if you're good enough um, and if you're thinking about, you know, um, playing in the, in the in the division one, division two or division three level and, you you know, trying to see where you are, you know, always, you know, look at the, like I said, look at the team roster and from there, you know, look at some of the competitions uh, that they've had because they're going to post the times, you know, uh, online or the times on the on the team roster. You know, and try to compare, you know, those athletes' times and your times or, you know, your averages, you know, just kind of have a, an idea of, you know, what is the entry point for this program? You know, so when it comes to swimming, you know, what are your times compared to, you know, as a senior, for example, or as a junior, compared to, you know, some of the athletes um, in the roster already, you know, so that you have an idea of, you know, where you might fall. 
Um, and, and again, I mean, going back to, you know, going to the next point about eligibility, um, you know, the, the keeping eligibility, I believe, as an as a athlete is probably one of the easiest things to do because you have so much support around you, as I mentioned, you know, at University of Arizona, we have a dedicated uh, academic support, you know, center for student athletes. Um, you know, again, academic, academic advisors, especially the learning specialists, um, they're going to be, you know, keeping up with you uh, every single, you know, step to make sure that you know about your quizzes and exams and all those things. But, you know, to maintain eligi eligibility, you know, your freshman, your sophomore year, it might be, you know, you're still learning the rules, but by the time you get to your junior year, you kind of understand, you know, how everything works. Um, so that makes it, uh, makes it a little bit easier. And again, I mean, one of the things that I always mention too, you know, which kind of goes back to understanding the college mindsets and, and understanding about, you know, what I mean by recruiting zones. You know, if you look at some of the some of the sports like, um, you know, track and field, for example, and if you look at, you know, some of the distance, you might find some coaches tend to either recruit from the Caribbean or, you know, some coaches might be looking at recruiting at, you know, uh, different countries like, you know, Kenya or something like that. I'm just using this as an example. That should not be an, you know, discouraging factor to anybody who is thinking about, you know, for example, University of Arizona, you know, always again, you know, reaching out um, to the to the coaches, regardless of, you know, where you feel like most of the international students come from um, going forward. And again, you know, uh, what I would also like to say is if, if you reach out and you you feel like you you got the times or the the, the marks to to you know to be competitive you know um, if you don't hear anything you can reach out to me I will share my email uh, at the end of this. Another advice you know going forward for the students who are not seniors and again I mean COVID is probably you know upsetting everything. A lot of students get noticed in these sports camps you know especially when it comes to basketball, swimming, you know tennis and and some other sports. A lot of these camps, there's a lot of scouts, you know, recruiting scouts or coaches that, you know, will put together, you know, uh, sports camps. So, for example, you know, the, the basketball coach at the University of Arizona will always have a camp in the, in the summer. That's a very, very good place to get noticed um, as a, you know, as a future student athlete, um, you know, if, if it's possible to participate to these, uh, to these camps. Now, having said all those things, um, as you know, you know, the most of the college seasons and, and, and programs have been highly, highly affected by, you know, by COVID. Um, so it, it remains to be seen what the eligibility will be going forward, and especially for students that were seniors. Um, you know, if I may think of, you know, for example, track and field last season, you know, they were disrupted, you know, at NCA level. I mean, that was, you know, canceled. So what is going to be going forward? Are these athletes going to be given their fifth year of eligibility? As you know, um, you have, you know, five years to, you know, to graduate um, or to finish your eligibility. So are they going to be given that, you know, more time to, to compete and that kind of thing? But um, yeah, COVID is, is really affected, you know, the day-to-day -day, uh, everything of, you know, I just went to, um, to, the, to the main uh, strength uh, and conditioning uh, facility or to, to the main gym for athletes. And, you know, I was talking to the coaches there and they were telling me that how difficult it is now to train athletes because, you know, it's, everything is limited as soon as one team or not even a full team, a group of athletes leave, you know, they have to, you know, they come in and just have to wipe, you know, everything and then, you know, uh, kind of go forward from there. So it's a little bit, it's a little bit tricky, um, as you probably know, um, training right now and also competing is going to be a little bit tricky, which is really, really unfortunate, but because it's probably the challenges of the time. Yeah, so um, promoting yourself, I think I probably mentioned this a little bit. Um, you know, I think it is, is to me, if I, if I think back in my many, many years of, 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 uh, of competing, uh, obviously I didn't know how to market myself as good as the college athletes. I mean, the current college um, or high school athletes are now because of social media. Um, but I think, I think um, you know, if, if you're going, if you're reaching out to a coach uh, or, or you know, anything like that, you know, make sure that you understand your, you know, your profile. You have a profile, for example, and you can share, you know, numbers. For example, if, if you are, a, a, you know, a tennis player or if you are a track and field, you know, um, you know, player. For example, you know, anything that you can share that is going to show the coach that you are not, you know, you are an exceptional. 
maybe you, you know, won state championships, you know, two years in a row, et cetera, et cetera. That's, you know, something that is going to, you know, stand out in, uh, uh, in anybody's mind. But, but again, I mean, going back to what I was suggesting, you know, if you can look at, you know, uh, the program that you're interested in, you know, for example, at University of Arizona, look at the roster, you know, look at, you know, last year's competition results, look at, you know, this year's competition results, if there's anything, see where you fall within that. And then, you know, as you reach out, the more you share with these coaches and, and the, you know, the numbers and your times and all that stuff, the more they know that you've done, uh, you've done your work. So, and this kind of goes to, to the same way as reaching out to coaches, you know, make sure that you've done, you know, you've done your homework that is not, it doesn't seem like, you know, you completely, um, you know, uh, in the dark about, you know, where the program, you know, where the program is, you know, some of the places that I've traveled, um, and again, you know, athletes from, you know, from Canada probably understand this, you know, much, much better than anybody else. But, you know, some of the places that I've gone, um, you know, I've had, really really interested uh, students in, in doing in, in doing sports for example track and field and you know they would say oh i run 400 meters and i'll be like okay well what is your time and then they'll give me the time and i'll be like well that's probably not gonna you know it's, it's not gonna be for, div for division one not even a university of arizona so again doing your own work i think is going to be uh is going to help you out a lot but again uh, as mentioned before, if you believe you have the times and you're sitting, you know, uh, at a really good level uh, of, of getting noticed and you feel like you're not getting noticed, you know, um, by all means, reach out to me and, and I can see, you know, if I can uh, forward your um, your information to uh, to the correct people. Um, again, I mean, so what you include when contacting coaches and I think as I just mentioned, uh, if you have your times and any championships that you participated, you know, for example, if you represented Canada in World Junior Championships, you know, things like that. If you won state, you know, or any any you know major championships that you recruited again at, at the Division One level, um, unfortunately, you know, um, because it's so competitive. Going back to my you know initial question, if the NCA was a country in the Olympics, where would they finish? Um, you know, they, you know, the standards are a little bit, um, you know, pretty high, but that should not be a discouraging factor to anybody. Yeah. Next. Thank you, Thomas, for that information. Um, so now getting on to financial aid for, um, for international students, so merit aid. And we do offer merit aid for our international students and for our first year students. There we go. Um, we offer ranging um, students who have a GPA of a 3.0 up to a 4.0 are eligible for our Global Wildcat Scholarship. The amounts range from 1,000 per academic um, year up to $10,000 per academic year. Now we understand that given everything that's happening right now, it's not accessible to many students outside the U.S. to take the SAT or ACT. And so we, we don't require those exams for, um, for admission, but previously we did look at them for scholarship consideration. However, starting in fall 21, that will no longer be the case. We will only be looking at GPA. Um, the University of Arizona is also OSAP and RESP approved. So I know that's helpful for a lot of Canadian families. Additionally, we also offer transfer scholarships, and I know that for most students watching this, you are looking to start at a U.S. college, ideally right from your freshman year, but if you happen to transfer from a school, a college in Canada, or even a community college within the U.S., we do offer some scholarships as well. Okay, um, so joining us in a few minutes is going to be our student athlete, um, James Rivers. And I'm just going to read some information about him while we wait. Um, he is a pre-business major. He's, uh, his sport is rugby and he's currently a sophomore. He's originally from the UK, but also studied several years in Hong Kong before going back to the UK and then coming here to the University of Arizona. I will share some quotes with you all that he provided. And so he talks about, oh, sorry, about what his journey and applying and getting admitted. So, okay. Um, so as he says here, it was straightforward applying and getting admitted. And he is currently part of the rugby team. His freshman year was very exciting. He got to be in a completely different culture and country from what he was used to. 
So the University of Arizona has over 4,000 international students and they come from all over the world on top of all our domestic students. So students really get a chance to explore and meet people from different walks of life, from different parts of the world and really get to learn uh, about other places. Um, he also lived in a residence hall, which is, he lived in the stadium dorm. So stadium dorm, as the name implies, is right by stadium. So it's right next to the Arizona stadium and right across from one of our rec centers. Um, they have some of the wider rooms. And so if you don't mind hearing the, our marching band practicing for the football games or hearing the football games, even if you're not there, um, it's a perfect place. A lot of people really enjoy staying at stadium. And one of his biggest challenges as a student athlete was finding the right school since he didn't get to visit any of the campuses. So he had to um, apply based on what he saw online. I know this is currently the condition for a lot of students because COVID has limited a lot of travel. But as I mentioned before, we do offer virtual tours if you want to check out our campus. And we are more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. I think James just joined us. Hi, James. Hello. Okay, so um, I was just going over some of the quotes okay. that you gave us, that you gave me um, via email. And so if you would like to just share a few words about your experience as a University of Arizona Wildcat and how that has been for you, um, we would love to hear about it. Yeah, no worries. Um, yeah, no, being a Wildcat here has been absolutely amazing. It's been one of the best experiences I've faced in my life so far. Like um, coming here from Hong Kong and the UK, it was completely different to what I was used to. And I'm so grateful for that because um, you don't really get to experience much. And um, I'm so glad I chose coming to America over coming to uh, the, going to the UK for university just because of how um, different and how like um, welcoming everyone is um, and one of that was like one of the best um, best reasons to come for me to be honest so yeah that's great and how has been playing rugby for the University of Arizona how's that been for you well, it's been really good so far I've been really enjoying it um, it's um, challenging times especially with this whole pandemic going on but um, it's still good to currently get out there and train with the boys and uh, get around for the new se this upcoming season. So yeah, that's great to hear. And can you? I know that you're a pre-business major, which I mentioned previously in our presentation. That is one of our competitive programs. Since other is our business programs are top twenty in the country. Can you tell us about how that's been for you? How your business classes are going? Oh yeah, they're going really well. Um, obviously, it's a bit weird doing it all on Zoom currently. But um, last year, I've really enjoyed. Um, just learning and going to class and going to these massive lectures. But um, yeah, no, they're going well so far. So hopefully it all goes well in the upcoming future. Great. And, um, you know, lastly, can you share any like special um, places around campus that you really enjoy or something that just a favorite, favorite part for you? Yeah, no, um, in fairness, uh, if I'm being completely honest, I still get lost on campus. So I don't really know all the ins and outs of it already. But um, one thing freshman year that I really enjoyed was going to like um, the North Rep where they had the, the there's this buffet where it's all you can eat and I love that and then also they had one by the stadium as well so just going to those was really good getting the grub and all the food and just good for me. That's great thank you so much James we really appreciate your time um, and thank you so much. Great thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye. Um, so lastly, um, to apply to main campus, it's a very straightforward approach, especially for our students in Canada. Um, so the first thing would be complete the international application, which can be found in our website, admissions.arizona.edu, on how to apply international first year. And you would pay the $85 application fee. Later, you would also submit your high school transcripts. So in order for us to do an evaluation and make an admission decision, we require at least three full academic years. Now, I know that in some provinces in Canada, uh, high school is 10, 11, and 12, uh, versus like it is in the US where it's typically nine to 12th grade is considered high school. However, um, we can work with you. Um, you can get us, you know, you can get us grades nine, 10, 11, 
or we can accept, you know, second semester ninth grade, full semester 10, 11, and then first semester 12th grade. Since a lot of the time students are applying in their first semester of 12th grade, it's a little hard for them to give us a full 12th grade transcript in the moment that they're applying. Um, for specific country requirements, um, I, you can visit our website. And so since country ha uh, since Canada has different provinces and I know the grading scales are different, um, if you look there, it'll show you by region what, um, what the equivalent in your region is to what we're looking for. So in the US, it's a 3.0 GPA equivalent, which in some regions is like an average B grade uh, more or less. And for those provinces where the primary um, or and our official language is not English, we would most likely require proof of English. So I'm more than happy to walk students through that and what that means and how they can complete that requirement if that is your case. And then another thing to keep in mind, because I have seen this in my previous year with some of my Canadian students, is citizens of Canada do not need a visa to enter or study in the US. All that is needed is a valid Canadian passport and an I-20 form. So when students are admitted, they request their I-20 form through our international student services. And once that I-20 form is given, our team will walk them through the immigration processes and what that means and what, um, what requirements come with that. And can, um, Canadian students really have um, an advantage over everywhere else in the world really to come into the US because that's all they need. They do not need a tourist visa, they do not need a student visa as the current immigration law stand all they need is a valid Canadian passport and an I-24. Okay, um, lastly, we are all on social media. So if you want to follow us, our Instagram handle is UAV Global Admissions. And if you tag us with your admission letter, we would love to feature you. Um, the student in the picture is Parker. He's one of our Canadian students from last year and he was featured um, so if you're interested, um, please post. We'd love to see it. Okay. And if you have questions, um, please contact us. My name again is Valeria Quijada. My email is listed and so is my office phone number. Um, that same office phone number is connected to WhatsApp. So if students prefer to contact me via WhatsApp, I'm more than happy to respond to that. Um, our general email is international at arizona.edu and our main website is admissions.arizona.edu slash international.